Hi, this is Mitch Mitchell. Let me start with this. <sighs> that was my reaction to the Ferguson announcement last night. Um, and it's a different reaction than the one I had with the Trayvon Martin decision uh, last year where I was really angry and I was in that mood where I really wanted to go out and hurt somebody, but of course I couldn't because one, I'm too old, two, I was not in my own hometown, <laughs> and three, who am I going to, by the time I had thought about hurting someone, I probably wouldn't have done it anyway. Um, in this particular instance, I think we've known for probably a few weeks that this was the decision that was coming down. I mean, let's be realistic here. The governor put out the National Guard ahead of time. That never happens with a grand jury. This whole thing was pretty much being set up to, well, acquit this guy. That, that's all it was. They didn't want to bring it to trial. Uh, the prosecutor basically did everything that prosecutors never do to try to, in my opinion, get this thing thrown out. That's all it is. Um, and usually prosecutors are actually at least want something to go to trial to have some kind of thing going. But you know what? I think that these people in Ferguson really are just trying to hide from this. Now, I'm not going to talk about that specific thing. Instead, I'm going to talk about some aftermath stuff, which is interesting to me. You know, you know, there was this riot. There's the riot going on in Ferguson. And that's not a surprise because, you know, it happened earlier in the year and they've been rioting and they were prepared for it. And you expect that. Um, and it was amazing that there were people in other communities around the country who worry about rioting in their town from this. I said, really? I mean, the cops in L.A. were worried about a riot in L.A. They weren't worried about rioting after those cops got off in Detroit uh, back in 90, was it 92? The Rodney King beating? You know, no one rioted in Detroit. No one rioted in Baltimore. No one rioted anywhere else for what happened in Los Angeles. So I thought that was, you know, kind of a unique thing. But there was a question that someone put up um, on Facebook, and I thought, well, this is kind of interesting, and I wanted to, to basically go after it. And her thing was, I don't understand why they have to go and riot and burn down businesses in their own communities. That doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm going to address that. And some people aren't going to like the answer, but I'm going to address that. You know, people don't riot just because of one thing. You just don't. If everything had always been good and all of a sudden one day a kid was killed, people aren't going to riot. It has nothing to do with the one instance. What it has to do with is a buildup of incidences. And finally, one gets caught on tape and everyone says, OK, finally, this is the one that's going to show everybody what's been going on. And you know what? Every time in these communities, they get off. They always get off. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's just the way it is. And let's think about this. Where else are they going to riot? Are they going to go like 10, 15 miles into the suburbs and riot in those communities? Yeah, that's going to work real well. You know, <laughs> when you're ready to riot, you riot where you are. You're not going anywhere else. One of the stupidest things I've ever heard. Why are they rioting? Because, you know, this country's pretty much proven that sometimes the only way you get any kind of overall justice later on is by violence. For all the people who love to talk about nonviolent, and you know, I'm not necessarily a violent guy, but every time there's a riot or there's some kind of violence, something changes, whether it's just a conversation about how things are going or whether the political structure changes or whatever, something happens. And this is what's going to end up happening in Ferguson at some point. You know, it, it's just amazing to me that we have this major racial divide that no one really wants to address and no one wants to talk about, and no one wants to realize that it's the absolute truth. But it is. You know, last night, the mayor of Rochester, and Rochester's got a black mayor, and Rochester has a real strong, high black population, came out with her statement. And I thought it was a pretty nice statement. But all the people in the Rochester newspaper who commented were against her. They all hated her. And some said, sure, she only cares about minorities. You know, she's a black mayor. And how they want to get rid of her and how they hate her. And I'm thinking, are you really? But the other side of it was that everyone who commented was white. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> you, we really have these, these divides that we're never going to get to. Before this thing came out in Ferguson, 
they did some kind of survey. CNN did some kind of survey. And they came out and said there's a great divide between races uh, based on the, you know, of opinion on Ferguson. I'm thinking, really? Duh. There was a great divide on the Trayvon Martin thing. There was a great divide on Rodney King. There's always a great divide. There is no real justice in this in this world. Let's look at New York City. New York City is supposed to be, you know, this this mega mix of people where everyone gets along. It's not true. And then Giuliani gets on TV the other day and says, well, if you weren't killing your own folks, you wouldn't have um, white police officers in your neighborhood. I'm sorry. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. If the police are a ratio of 50 to 1, there's 50 white police officers to 1, what the, what the devil are you trying to say? And this is New York City. What? Are you kidding? And for him to come out with a stupid statement like that, the reverse of that statement is, how many black officers kill white unarmed people? Oh, geez, I don't think there were any. And then, if there are any, are going to get totally cleared and free and get to go anywhere else. Never going to happen in any city in America today. It's never going to happen. This is not an issue of black and black crime. Let's not like muddy up the water with apples and oranges and all this other kind of stuff. It's a totally different thing. This is cops killing unarmed people. And there was another story the other day of a white cop who killed a 12-year-old, a 12-year-old who was shooting a BB gun or had a BB gun and he killed him because he, you know, thought it was a real gun. Now, you know what? That one I'm not so sure about because they showed the gun. And I got to tell you the truth, I don't really know anything about guns, so if I looked at the gun, I might have thought it was something also. And I don't know if the kid aimed it or whatever. But, you know, if, if there's really a situation where you're just not sure about your life or whatever, okay, I'm not blaming cops on that. Uh, but some of these things that are happening, you know, folks, you're going to get a realization. The realization is going to be that, you know what, white people aren't always going to be in power in this country. You're not always going to be the majority of this country. As a matter of fact, in 20 years, you're not going to be the majority of this country. Hispanics are. Now, they don't have a great political base. They don't have a lot of a great economic base to really enforce their authority. Uh, so things are pretty much, there's not going to be any real change. <laughs> you know, so all you people who are worried about it, you know, about the immigration, like uh, Michelle Bachman with her stupid self the other day saying, oh, we just got 5 million uneducated people who are going to vote Democrats. <sighs> it's stuff like that, where people say these things, and sometimes they apologize for it, and sometimes they don't, that make black people think you don't care. You could care less. As long as you get to stay up here and stay above the fray, and then later on come out with your... I don't know why they do that, or, oh, they they shouldn't be rioting, or they shouldn't be, please, really? I don't know. I just think that we're going to see a lot more Fergusons. We're going to see them hitting closer to home, uh, and this is, you know, there it is. It, this is just how it is. Uh, as long as the populace decides that the lives of minorities don't matter to anybody. This is just how it is. And I hate to go on this kind of thing, but you know what? I was pulled over a couple of times when I was younger. So, you know, and you know, if you're going to pull me over for nothing and just say, oh, so why are you in this neighborhood? I'm sorry. Are you kidding? You're going to pull me over because I'm in a neighborhood? You don't have the right. That's all I'm saying. So, you know. This is just my little thing. This is totally different than the Trayvon Martin thing because I think I was already prepared that this was going to be the thing. Um, I will say that I wish peace on the people of Ferguson. In my opinion, I hope you get your political base together and elect some leaders who will represent you. Since I understand the city is predominantly black, elect some people who will represent you. Go and vote. Go and vote. So there I am. Y'all take care. This is Mitch Mitchell. And of course, you hear the cool sound because that's my wife's cool sound. So she's sending me a text message. That's a great way to end the video. <laughs> Y'all take care. <laughs> See you next time.